You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is a Diplomat Ink. This is, uh, this is the first of the Diplomat Inks that I'm going to be reviewing. I got these from Drom Ghouls in Houston, Texas. I reached out because, uh, man, I really like all things Diplomat. Like, I mean, on my desk today are these two beauties. This beautiful Excellence A, which, I mean, look at that, look at that red. And then this is the Arrow Flame, which is just an awesome pen. Uh, and so I had to check out these inks, of course. And, uh, Michael Drom Ghoul is kind enough to send out several bottles of these. So, we've got those to check out. So the box has this nice ink flower design here going around the lid. You got it on the side. You say diplomat links your emotions. You know, the first time I read that, I kept trying to make this an ink pun, like it inks your emotions. Nah, that's probably just a, just a slogan of theirs. All right, let's look at the bottle itself and get onto the ink and some comparisons. This is the bottle it comes in, which strikes me as a very typical sort of German bottle. Uh, you find uh, Pelican inks and Kaveco inks in bottles like these, and I think it's a perfectly serviceable bottle. It can uh, stand up on its corner if you uh, are running out of ink and you need to like pool some ink up here like it was getting low you can stick your pen in that way it's uh it's a nice little feature and i think these bottles are pretty attractive uh, big plastic cap uh, fairly wide mouth no problem getting in there with whatever pen you want to the only problem could be the depth, and that's uh, solved by turning it on its corner. That's what those corners are for. Uh, you also see here it says Diplomat uh, Deep Green by Octopus Fluids, and I was not familiar with Octopus Fluids, and I had to look them up. They're a German ink maker, and they make all kinds of inks, uh, industrial inks and printer inks and fountain pen inks and all kinds of things. So uh, that's fun, and I, uh, I do appreciate the Diplomat tells me where their ink comes from. That's pretty neat. Most ink makers or most uh, ink brands won't tell you where their ink is made, uh, secrets and all that. But uh, this one, octopus fluids. And I like octopies, so let's look at this ink. All right, this is an ink that I have had in a pen for, uh, I don't know, a little while. And I've had it in this pen mostly, which is my uh, Franklin Christoph uh, model 50 that I had for review, still have for review, even though I've put up the review, haven't returned it yet, because it's got this ink in it. And uh, this has a medium nib, and it's a pretty medium medium, as far as I can tell. This ink, however, is pretty wet. This is a uh, this is a uh, surprisingly wet ink, really. And I look, I'm on the fence about this one. If I'm 100% honest, so it's called Deep Green. It looks kind of kind of turquoisey teal in a swatch. In the actual writing samples, it looks pretty dark green because it's very wet. Uh, but part of the problem is that it has weird performance. So on this Rhodia paper. You can see, if you look closely, or if you look at my static blog, inkdependence.com, you'll find there there are some, like, some feathers and that sort of thing, and, like, some bleed-through on, uh, on Rodeo, which is weird. Not so much in the swatch, although a little bit, but just in the regular writing, and that's very strange. You don't usually see stuff bleeding through Rodeo, but... Uh, did I put a performance? Uh, yeah, performance tends to bleed and feather. And then I wrote with it on some 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper. And like, yeah, does it feather like a tiny bit? There are a few feathers here and there, but the bleeding is not, it's not bad. Like it seems to do the same, maybe slightly worse on copy paper than it does on Rhodia. But I think it actually performs pretty darn well on copy paper. It's not that bad. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, this is an ink that seems to have a little bit of a bleeding problem, but also, I've got it in this medium nib, and I think maybe what we want to do is put it in a finer nib or a drier nib, and I think that will really help the performance of this ink. Now, it might, uh, edge this deep green closer to these teals and such, but, uh, I mean, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with teals. Uh, comments, like, look, this is an ink I was very interested in getting, and I'm a little bit let down, uh, not not a huge amount because I mean look it it works perfectly fine and it depends it just really depends on what paper you put it on I think that's that's the takeaway here now let's uh, do a little bit of a water test and then we'll uh, get it uh, next to a whole bunch of other inks and look at it on some other papers all right let's put some water on our subject here. There we go that should be plenty. And as you can see, you've got uh, quite a bit of blue coming off the top of it, which is interesting. Let's get a little bit of a swirl. There we go. All right, should be good enough. Let's blot it away safely. Blot, blot, blot.
There. And uh, yeah, nothing, nothing left. All of it came up on the paper towel here. There's not really anything left on the paper. You can sort of make out what I wrote, the water drop test and the dots and the lines, but uh, for all intents and purposes, this is uh, not water resistant at all. So let's look at the chromatography. Looks like it is. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about what we should expect, I suppose. There's nothing left down here. And then a fair amount of blue up the top, a little bit of green trailing after. And uh, we saw a lot of this sort of uh, tealy, sort of turquoisey color on here. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff. In fact, weirdly, I don't see any of the green on the paper towel. Chromatography is weird. <laughs> so there you go. But that's deep green. Nice looking chromatography, no water resistance. Okay, let's look at it on a couple of other papers. First up, uh, this is my Tomoe River ink journal. I really like these ink journals, pretty good. Uh, and there is the deep green uh, entry. And here you can see it looks like a very nice emerald, like it's taken on a lot of emerald color on this paper, this Tomoe River, where it doesn't really soak in at all. Uh, and this reminds me a little bit of Emerald 357 from uh, Franklin Kristoff, but uh, a bit more green, I think, than that. The, the emerald tends to be a little bit, a little bit bluer. But yeah, more emerald than deep green, I think. And then here, in my Inky Fingers ink journal, this is uh, wheat straw paper, yet another type of paper. You can see here, it actually looks very nice. It looks like a very nice green on this paper. So this ink changes character and performance quite a lot, depending on what sort of paper you put it on. And I'm looking closely at this paper, and I don't see any kind of feathering or spreading or any of that nonsense. And of course, it didn't bleed through at all. So it's really good on this wheat straw. I think it looks really nice in this ink journal paper. Let's uh, see how the back of here. Yeah, no, it didn't really have any problems on Tomoe River. I don't think it was trying to come through or anything. Just, you know, your normal show through from Tomoe River. So, um, yeah, it looks pretty good on those. So that's cool. Uh, let's look at it next to a whole bunch of other inks. There it is on my Colodex card, and I pulled this one as I was going through because this is kind of what I think of when I think of a deep green, uh, like a Sherwood green. This Sherwood green is gorgeous. Look at the look at the like piney tree sorts of greens, and next to it, this looks just straight up. I don't know tealy turquoise. I'm gonna go with teal. I'm gonna call that a teal. I'm always a little bit torn on what tur turquoise and teal are like, but I think it's more of a teal. So yeah, there's our, our green reference. Uh, then we've got uh, Lamy Crystal Peridot, which is a little bit dustier, but definitely in the same kind of vein. Oh, actually, I bought this from from Drum Ghouls. Got a little bit of parody there. How about how fun is that? Uh, then I've got uh, KWZ Discovery Green, which uh, I got from Drum Ghouls last year. And Discovery Green is a Sheen Monster. Uh, do they have one? No, Sheen Machine is what they have. But this is a Sheen Monster, and in fact, you don't usually see the green in this ink. You just see the, the red, purpley Sheen. But when you look at uh, here and here, these base colors, uh, pretty much the same. So I think uh, this Diplomat Deep Green is actually a lot like what Discovery Green looks like if you don't have the, the Sheen on top of it. And then uh, Franklin Kristoff Emerald 357, which is the one I was just referencing, which does tend to be a little bit more blue, I think. But uh, I think it's actually very close. Uh, here in these swatches. I tend to think of it a little bit more blue, but maybe it's just very close. Uh, but yeah, Emerald 37, great ink. really like that one. We've got uh, Monteverde's California Teal, which is, I think, more... Mm, maybe a little bit more green than Discovery Green. When you get into these teals, it can be very hard to tell exactly what's going on in them. They're such interesting and complex colors. And then here is Robert Oster's Emerald, which is another one that I think is just much more green than deep green is. So if you're looking at uh, like a bright green, I think Emerald works. Uh, and then if you're looking at it for like a foresty green, I think Sherwood green is a little bit closer. And then lastly, Diamine November Rain, which here and here are kind of similar, but again, a huge amount of sheen on this one. So if you want a whole bunch of sheen, but you want that kind of color underneath, I would say find uh, Discovery Green or Diamine's November Rain. Uh, but uh, this uh, this green, this deep green from Diplomat is really a very interesting ink. Uh, and it just really depends on what paper you're going to use it in and what nib you're going to use as to how it looks and what kind of color it looks like and uh, how the performance is. It's um, This one is a little bit all over the map for me, and I'm not sure what to make of it. So I'm interested to see what the rest of these look like and feel like because, I'll tell you, 
The next one coming up is Diplomat Orchid, and this is nothing like Deep Green. So, uh, interesting stuff. Definitely worth a try if you're looking for a, uh, a really wet flowing and uh, sort of uh, emeraldy green. I would say give Diplomat Deep Green a try. So thanks very much, Drum Ghouls. Uh, you can find this for at uh, Drum Ghouls for $10.80 in a 30 mil glass bottle. Uh, they have, uh, I think... Man, there are a lot of colors, like 15, 17 colors, something like that of this now. So, uh, you know, check them out there. Let them know I sent you. And uh, like, comment, subscribe to this, uh, this channel. I'll see you all in another video. Peace out.